G'day guys, we've been given a finance question to go through today where we've got a biotechnology company that's about to announce some results of a clinical trial. If the trials are successful, the stock will be worth 70 bucks. If the trials are unsuccessful, the stock will be worth 18 bucks. Suppose that on the morning before the results are announced, the stock is trading for 55 bucks. Based on the current share price of $55, what sort of expectations do investors have about the success of trials? Now, basically what we're going to do to try and get our head around like the correct way to solve this problem is I'm going to basically create the same problem but in a simpler version. So we're going to explore the logic of the efficient market hypothesis. Now the efficient market hypothesis or E I'm going to call it just EMH for short, basically says that all the information that is currently available to all of the investors is already built into the share price. So if new information becomes available, the share price moves. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to explore this sort of logic with a game. And what we're going to do is in this game we're going to roll a dice. Now in this game you you know you buy a ticket to roll the dice and now what we can expect is that the numbers that are going to come up are all of equal probability because it's a fair dice and what we have here now the reason that this is a game you know if we roll the numbers 1 to 4 we get a pay of payoff of 6 bucks now if we roll a 5 or a 6 we get a payoff of 30 bucks. Now, basically with this game, what we want to try and find out is what is the maximum amount we'd be willing to pay for a ticket into this game. So, the maximum amount is when the expected payoff is going to be equal to zero. So that's the maximum amount, anything more than that, and you're going to lose money. So basically what we want to do first is we want to see what our expected payoff in this game is if we're, the ticket price is, well, there is no ticket price. So the expected payoff of this game to start with is equal to the probability of the first situation happening, which is two-thirds, times the payoff with that associated probability, add the probability of the other event occurring times the payoff of that event occurring. Now, 2 thirds of 6 is 4, 1 third of 30 is 10, add those two together, we get Fourteen bucks. Now, basically, so what that means is the expected for the expected payoff to be zero, the maximum we'd be willing to pay for this game. So the maximum would be equal to fourteen dollars. That's how much we'd be willing to pay for our ticket. And because if we play this game like a high number of times, at a fourteen dollar ticket price, we expect to lose no money or win any money either. Okay, so how does this apply to this up here? Well, like in our dice rolling game, we've got two situations that occur can occur. We can win or the shares can be um, the trial sorry can be successful and we make money or the shares go up or the share pri the trials can be unsuccessful and the share price goes down. Now Basically, what this $50, $5 amount that the shares are currently trading at is what the maximum the market is willing to pay based on their expected probabilities of the trials being successful or unsuccessful. Now, because this is like a binary sort of situation, you can only have two situations. The way that we can represent this is we can say that the share price or $55, let's just separate it as well. $55 
is going to be equal to $70 times the probability that they're successful. So I'll put it in a little bracket and write P. So P is going to be the probability that they're successful plus $18 times the probability that they're unsuccessful. Now because this is just a binary sort of situation, the probability that it's going to be unsuccessful, this is the complementary event, is just 1 minus P. Because the P and 1 minus P have to add up to 1. So, what we can then do is we're just going to use algebra to solve this. So we're going to have 55 bucks is equal to 70p plus $18 minus 18p. Cool. I'm going to combine my like terms on this side and move the 18 to the other side. So I'm going to have 37. is equal to 70 take 18 is 52 P so therefore P is equal to 37 on 52 now which is equal to it's probably easier to write in decimals um, 0.712 so the way we can interpret that is we can say the market believes that there is a 71.2 percent chance of the trials success cool so basically what we've done here is using the efficient market hypothesis or the logic from the efficient market hypothesis what we can do is we can say that the current share price is a sum of of all of the different probabilities and their associated payoffs of all the different situations that could possibly happen. So the efficient market hypothesis states that if all things, all other things being equal, there's no insider trading, blah, 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 blah. There's no like knowledge arbitrage that some um, person can have over another person. Efficient market hypothesis says that whatever the share price is, is an exact representation of all of the probabilistic outcomes of the, that the share can go, whether it be going up, going down, going left, going right. The sh current share price is all of the basically the weighted average of all of those different outcomes. So the, what we could do then is if we have the the outcomes that that are available to us, we can then build in what the market would be willing to pay for that share. And using the efficient market hypothesis, the maximum amount that the market would be willing to pay for that share is when the expected payoff is equal to zero, just like in our game that we made up over here. The maximum we wanted to pay for this sort of rolling the dice game is 14 bucks. The maximum that the market would be willing to pay would be 55 bucks. And that's associated with a 71.2% chance of the trial success. So I hope this video helped, guys. I've tried to break it down as best as I can. If it did, sling it a like. Subscribe to my channel. I make new videos all the time. And um, until next time, I'll see you soon.